Welcome to the Cold Cases of Yellowstone County. I'm Lynn Turner Fitzgerald. The purpose of this series is to re-examine 10 unsolved homicides in Yellowstone County dating back to the 1970s. In this episode, we'll look at the deaths of Clifford and Linda Bernhardt, a young married couple who were murdered in their home in Billings Heights on November the 6th, 1973. Their killer has never been found. Of all the cold cases that currently are being examined in Yellowstone County, the oldest one, uh, and maybe the most troubling one, is the one of Clifford and Linda Bernhardt back in 1973. Correct. Tell me about that. Well, this one was in November 7th, uh, 6th or 7th. We haven't quite determined which, uh, what day that was. On the 7th, uh, Linda's mother responded to Cliff, uh, Clifford and Linda's house that they just moved into just uh, about a month before and uh, because they hadn't shown up for a work uh, project the, the night before it was uh, I, I believe they were going to do some cleaning someplace and uh, when she went over there she actually had to force her way into the back of the house and uh, found both of them uh, dead in the house. So How did they die? Um, probably both of them by strangulation. Uh, Clifford had a uh, pretty severe wound to the head, and uh, the actual uh, autopsy indicated that they both died by strangulation. So, Together? Were they in the same room? They were actually in separate rooms, mm -hmm. and uh, when they found them, um, they, had, they had both uh, indications that they had been bound, mm -hmm. and uh, Linda had been sexually assaulted mm -hmm. and uh, from there the investigation just uh, progressed. Well the first thing they found was that the uh, windows had been opened. In fact I believe the temperature at that day was about six degrees out so it was very very cold. The windows were open in the house that the thermostat had been turned all the way down so somebody had uh, intentionally tried to um, change the temperature mm -hmm. uh, and the atmosphere in the house. So Clifford was actually found in, the, in one of the bedrooms uh, in a pool of blood, face down, and Linda was found in another bedroom and she was also face down. Uh, Indication that Linda had been sexually assaulted and uh, the uh, investigators just basically went on from there. Can we talk about the mother cleaning up some of the scene? Yeah, uh, and that's what I was going to say. We, it, it's, um, when they started looking at the kitchen, the area of the kitchen, there, there was a, there could have been an indication that there might have been uh, the two of them plus somebody else there for dinner. But we can't, we can't definitely say that because Linda's mother, while waiting for law enforcement to arrive, actually cleaned up some of the dishes, and which changed the scene a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they had to do a little bit of um, investigation and talking to the mother to see exactly what she did. but. Uh, there was an indication that possibly there was a uh, another person there that might have had dinner, but uh, we can't we can't may say not that have, for sure. May not have been an intruder then; may have been an invited guest. Uh, absolutely, that 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 could very well be the case. Um, now, we, Clifford Bernhardt was not a small man. No, I have read that he's a pretty strapping, athletic person. And his co-workers said the same thing. You know, he worked for a concrete company here in mm -hmm. town and that uh, he probably wasn't going to be taken advantage of very easily and, and, and that could very well be a reason for the, you know, the, the wound to the head. Um, maybe the suspect disabled him that way before um, actually killing him by strangling him and to, to prevent him from any kind of a rescue situation or, you know, being able to rescue Linda. So, I would say that it probably wasn't somebody that forced their way in and just took advantage. It, judging by the evidence, it was probably somebody that they knew that uh, they probably weren't even too concerned about at the time. One theory is that Linda was the intended victim. After the perpetrator raped and murdered her, he gathered all of her underwear into a suitcase and disappeared. Evidence was gathered at the scene. Some contained DNA. All right, so fast forward 40 years from the crime to today. So we have now the technology, we've right. got the DNA and the DNA testing. If there's no suspect, how do you find who the DNA belongs to? 
Well, if, if a suspect isn't entered into the system, uh, then you just continue the old good cop work. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, that's not to say that we can't find something that, that has already been entered. We don't know that this isn't somebody that hasn't com committed a crime before and might so already be entered. So that DNA would be in a entered crime. Into a de crime database or database. a CODIS or whatever, so and um, there it is. Yeah. Well, and if we have a suspect there, that at least is a is a it's another way to go. Mm -hmm. um, what about the public? What can we do? As far as the public, I, I believe again, like any other cold case that we are working on right now, somebody out there knows something. Recently, an anonymous person came forward with a $100,000 reward for a resolution in the Bernhardt case. Kathy Keepers was married to Clifford's cousin, and the two couples became close friends. So, you spent the weekend with the Bernhardts prior to their murders? Yes, we did. Do you remember what you guys did? I sure do. Um, my grandparents lived in a little town southeast of uh, Miles City called Broadus and the guys went down there to go fishing, or excuse me, hunting, <laughs> not fishing. And so we all went together, and I had a little girl who was three years old at the time, and she went with us, and we spent the weekend at my grandparents' home, and, and the fellows went, went hunting. We got home oh, late in the afternoon, four or five o'clock on Sunday, and then um, we usually talked to Cliff and Linda daily, but I don't remember speaking to them on Monday. Um, but the morning they were found was the last time that we had any connection with them. Mm -hmm. um, what were they like? They were a lot of fun. <laughs> they just really enjoyed life. They enjoyed each other. They were really committed to one another in their marriage. They were committed to one another in, in their families and their friends. They both were hard workers. Um, they just had a good time. We just did things together that were a lot of fun. And they had been married um, for, what, three or four years, yeah, I suppose? Yeah, three or four years. Uh -huh. they, got married, they got married in 69, I believe, and they died in 73. But they had really been together a long time. Yes, they were childhood sweethearts. Don't see that very often. No, yeah. no. All right. Um, when you say that they were hard workers, uh, tell me about that. I know that they had just moved into a new home. Yes. Um, Linda worked at Ryan Grocers, which was a wholesale grocer at the time. And as far as I know, she had quite a few friends there and, and she was really devoted to her job. Cliff worked at Quality Concrete and he was a big, strong guy and he, he worked hard. As far as their home goes, yeah, they, they worked very hard in their home. They did a lot of the building themselves. They did contract some of it out. And actually, my first husband and I did some things there to help them, too. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, they also, though, kind of moonlighted, didn't they? Cleaning? Right. Linda's father and mother owned a uh, carpet cleaning company, and they also did um, cleaning, office cleaning. So they worked nights after they came home from work. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, they were pretty young to do all that. Yeah. So, um, what about Clifford's personality? Was he a quiet man or a life of the party type of guy? He was the life of a party, but he was very gentle. Um, he was very funny. He was just really devoted to having people around him. He was a people guy. Uh, but he was very gentle with his wife. and. Um, with most women, actually. Well, he grew up with sisters, so. Exactly, he, he, was, he was the only boy. Now, Linda has been described as feisty. <laughs> That's a great term for Linda, great term for Linda. She was a real, um, she was just a lot of fun. She had a good head on her shoulders. She, she thought things through, but she could be impulsive when she, when she had the moment to do that. So their two personalities worked pretty well together. Absolutely. How did you, how were you informed of their deaths? Um, a fellow that my first husband's worked with came and told me at home. Um, 
Riney, my first husband, had gotten a call from Linda's mother, June, and he immediately went to the house. And then he sent one of his co-workers to come and get me. Do you remember that day? Oh, yes. Very well. What were your thoughts? Well, um, I first thought that their, their brand new furnace had, get, had a gas leak. And I had in my mind that they had died in bed um, from, a, from carbon monoxide. So when we drove up to the house, um, and there was a lot of police officers there, I assumed there was something much worse. And you found out then right. at the scene? At the scene. Mm -hmm. Did a deputy or a police officer explain it to you? You know, I don't recall speaking to one right at the beginning, but my husband was there and he told me. So as the days then went on following their murders, how, how were you able to make sense of it? You know, I really don't remember. <laughs> I don't think I made sense of it. It was just, um, Billings was a little split, a little place then, and so the fear factor in this city was tremendous, and um, so actually we spent um, several days out at Riney's parents' home. They had a farm out in Lockwood, and we just stayed there for several days. Um, that's how we made sense of it, in whatever fashion that was. Now, looking back 40 years later, um, how do you feel about it? I still think of them so often, and um, I am thrilled that they've opened this back up and that possibly we are going to be able to do something for some finality in this family. Um, that's why I'm here today, to help with that. Do you recall the funeral? Oh, yes. Can you explain it or describe it? Oh, <laughs> um, uh, seeing two caskets there was um, extremely difficult. Um, and it was, it was kind of like a wedding because Cliff's side of the family sat on one side of the of the, f serve of the church and Linda sat on the other. It was very surreal. It was the same church they'd been married in. And um, it was just a very difficult situation. They were just a great couple. They were devoted to each other. Um, they wanted a child. Um, they just loved life. Who were Clifford and Linda Bernhardt? Both graduated from Billings Senior High in 1967. They were married June the 7th, 1969. Clifford served in Vietnam and Cambodia. He was discharged in 1971 as a sergeant. He was awarded a Purple Heart. Linda worked for Ryan Grocery Wholesale. Clifford worked for Quality Concrete. They were members of the Pilgrim Congregational Church. Detective Frank Fritz has 19 years with the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office. He is the lead detective on the Bernhardt case. For Yellowstone County in 1973, this was a pretty brutal act, pretty brutal murder. Yes. Um, and seemingly just random, although from everything I've read, family members believe that uh, the Bernhards probably knew their killer. I would make that assumption as well. Okay. Can you tell me why? Based on the way the crime scene was, was depicted through photographs and investigators' notes and their reports and all that, um, it's the, the crime scene is pretty, pretty clean, as I would call it. Okay? No, no real signs of a struggle in the living room or anything like that, which would indicate to me that the person or people that did this were known to the victims they would have allowed these people into their home. Well, also, I mean, the, the table was set for three people. Mm -hmm. Which would indicate that maybe somebody was coming for dinner or had come for dinner and left. Are there, are, are, have there been theories developed as to what, what was the purpose here? Was it Linda? Did the killer want Linda? There's, there's been several theories mm -hmm. over the years as to what, what the possible motive might be. Mm -hmm. um, 
narrowing down just one theory. In this case, I can't go into um, any of that, um, but I think we pretty much have one, possibly two main theories that we're looking at right now. Okay. Now, can you talk to me about DNA? It's been, it's been analyzed. Right. I can't get into the specifics of it, but it has been analyzed. Okay. Um, I can't say where we found it, but the killer definitely knows where we found the, uh, the DNA evidence at. Is the killer still out there? As far as I know. What after 40 years would make a person change their mind and come and say, wait a minute, I have information here? Um, a lot of things. Um, changes in relationships. Uh, husband, wife, divorce, boyfriend, girlfriend split over the years and they have information concerning one of these cases. Um, uh, reward money is out there. Um, revenge is another. Um, you have a, a dispute with, uh, with your friend at the time and he tells you or she tells you something about the case and then over the years you two split and you want to see them get into trouble so you come forward with that information. There's, there's several things that that might make a person change their mind to come in. Well, it's interesting to me that after 40 years, there is still enough passion about this case that an anonymous donor has come forward with that reward. Yes. There is a $100,000 or a reward being offered to anyone that has information, in, has information in the case that leads to an arrest and a conviction. If you make a, an arrest, do you believe you'll get a conviction? Yes, I do. Kelly Reich is Linda Bernhardt's younger sister. She remembers Linda as a protective sibling who took charge when their parents worked. So when did she start seeing Clifford? You know, I can't really remember the time. I can just remember them always being together. So um, all through high school, and they were really, really childhood sweethearts. And um, you never saw Linda without Cliff, you know, so. When I look at that, I just think it was the whole time. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. and certainly from your younger eyes, right. it must have seemed that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their wedding, tell me about that. Lots of people. Um, I was devastated that she was leaving our family, so I cried through most of it. And I still remember that, and I cried loudly. And uh, so, um, but lots of fun. Um, beautiful couple, you know. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. Did they have a lot of friends? They had a huge circle of friends, lots of friends. Um, <coughs> personal close friends, but friends of our family, friends of their family, and you know, um, so when, you, when I look back at it, I can say yes, they were blessed. They had a lot of good friends. Mm -hmm. So tell me then, um, after the murders, how did you find out that they were gone? I was actually at school, and uh, my sister-in-law at the time came and got me from school, and she didn't tell me where I was going. She just said, we need to get you home. And it was on the way home to the house that I found out that they had been murdered. And she told you that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How did she tell you? Matter-of-factly, just this is what happened. Was she in shock? Uh, oh, I'm sure she was in shock, and she probably didn't want to be the person to tell me that. Right. Um, but my parents were at home, and I'm sure devastated into dealing with that, and so she was kind of left to give me the news. So I'm sure it was really hard for her. So when you got home, what happened? A lot of people at the house, um, and I just walked in and, you know, talked to my mom, and my mom consoled me, and... And I just remember asking about it. How old were you at the time? I was a sophomore in high school. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we really didn't know how they were, um, what had happened. We knew they had been killed. We didn't know how. And I remember listening on the news and finding that out, the way that they had been murdered. So that was devastating. It just, just it changes your whole life. You just until you, that happens to somebody, you don't really understand it. No, no. Were you as a family speculating on what might have happened? Oh, 
Of course. I think you wonder, you know, maybe how did this happen or, or who did it or why they did it. Um, sure, we speculated. Did we have any people that we said, oh, we know exactly who would do this? No. I mean, you know, they just had a lot of friends and they were kind of this perfect couple. Um, so it was really hard to imagine that there would be somebody that would do this. So it was, yeah. Who would Linda be today? She'd be a mother, he'd be a father. I think they would have two or three children. I think they would be great parents. Um, I think they would still be close to all of us. I think we probably would all still be here in Billings. Uh, I, th I know she wanted children. She w really wanted to be a school teacher all her life. Mm -hmm. So maybe eventually she would have been a school teacher. Um, yeah, I think they, I think they would have been happy. When you say we would all still be here, what does that mean? You know, I think, I think when this happens, you don't know how to deal with it. And I think people deal with it in their own separate ways. And as hard as it was on my parents, I don't think there was really a source or an outlet they could go to to really deal with this. Um, so I think it splits families up. I think you, you tend to go different ways, and maybe some people go different way to escape it. Maybe some people just don't want to deal with it every day. Um, it was really hard on my parents. So I think the f their thoughts were to leave Billings and maybe leave that memory behind. And so when they left, I left too to go to college and my brother was still here. But you know, over the years, we kind of just went our separate ways. So I think if this wouldn't have happened, we probably would still be a family here in Billings. Is there anything that we should know about Cliff and Linda that we haven't already talked about? You know, nobody deserves to have that happen. Nobody deserves to go through that for whatever reason. Um, they were just good kids, you know, young, starting their life out. They had a future ahead of them. And for whatever reason, you know, tragedy strikes. So um, we just pray and hope that they'll find them. What is your hope? now in, in doing this interview? You hope, of course, we've always hoped that they find out who did this, you know? And you want somebody to pay, especially when it first happens, you're angry and you, you know, all you can think about is that person who did this terrible thing and you want them to pay. And sometimes I still think about that and I still want them to pay, but more than anything, I just want them to be to be brought to justice. You know, um, I, I've never believed it was a perfect crime. I never thought that uh, they would never get caught. You know, you always have that hope, but I, I really believe there's something there, and um, you just hold on to that. I appreciate the uh, Sheriff's Department and all their hard work. And um, taking a case that virtually wasn't really going anywhere, you know, and, and bringing it back to life. And um, putting their personal feelings into it and ownership of it. I really appreciate that. So those are the people, the people that go beyond what they need to do and they don't have to. They're, they have a job, but I think it's become more than a job for them. And uh, we all appreciate that. I speak for my entire family. Clifford and Linda Bernhardt are buried here at Sunset Memorial Gardens in Billings. Clifford's parents are buried in the adjacent plot. If you have any information about the deaths of Clifford and Linda Bernhardt, please contact the Cold Case Unit at the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Department. That number is 869-3530 or send an email to coldcaseunit at co.yellowstone.mt.gov. A $100,000 reward has been offered for any information that leads to an arrest and conviction in this case. I'm Lynn Turner Fitzgerald. 
Thank you for joining us.